so because the topic was like old to new uh, so i thought uh, let's let me cover some history so first splints for the spine were described in egyptian literature around 5000 years ago and there are some splints described in sushruta samhita also uh, in some uh, bc times and then in middle ages the armorers actually they manufactured these splints which protected the body as well as supported the uh, spine and in modern uh, era in the late 16th century french surgeon ambrose pare developed metal corsets for the uh, spine so um, we have to always remember these terminologies whenever we talk about orthosis or orthosus uh, so orthosis is a singular device uh, which used to aid or align a weakened body part and orthosus is a two or more devices used to aid or align a weakened body part orthotics is the field of study of orthosis and their management and orthotic is an adjective used to describe a device that is orthotic is a device and orthotist is a person trained in proper fit and fabrication of orthosis so we we shouldn't intermingle these terminologies we should know clearly what means what um what is the purpose of the spinal orthosis mainly its control of pain it mainly does it by limiting motion or uh, decreasing the weight bearing on that particular uh, area of the spine and some orthosis also trap the heat and provide some pain relief and uh, they also do protection against further injuries by, by limiting motion by promotion of the healing of fractures stabilization of the vertebral fragments and pro provide stabilization when soft tissue cannot and they assist when the muscles are weak also especially in neuromuscular scoliosis type of braces and serves as a kinesthetic reminder what do we mean by kinesthetic reminder basically whenever you have undergone a surgery or whenever you have a unstable situation whenever you wear these uh, braces they remind you by a basically kinesthetic reminder that you have a problem then you need to have precautions and then again uh, advanced orthosis uh, they also help in prevention and correction of deformities the, how they do it we'll see in next slides they also reduce reduction uh, axial loading and they give support in post surgical uh, scenarios uh, this is already covered by dr sudhir kapoor uh, that ideal orthosis should be functional it should be fitting well it should be light in weight easy to use it should be cosmetically acceptable that is very important and uh, it is easily maintained and repaired and washable and it should be ideally locally manufactured so why when we want to understand any orthosis or orthosis so we have to understand the basically the motion behind where we are what motion we are going to prevent so that is what is going to decide what kind of orthosis you are going to use so this is c0 c1 that is occiput and c1 the significant movement here is flexion and extension and other movements like bending and rotation rotation is zero and the bending is very limited and at c1 c2 complex the main movement is that is rotation 50% of the cervical spine rotation happens at c1 c2 joint and again the flexion extension is really minimal there and then subaxial cervical spine from c2 to c4 region has the most bending and rotational movement combined but then c5 c6 has the most flexion and extension movement so subaxial cervical spine mainly has a uh, basically flexion and extension movement c1 c2 has a rotatory movements and again c0 c1 has flexion extension movement coming to thoracic spine it has got a very limited range of motion because of the rib cage there, are, there is a very little flexion and extension happening but the main uh, function of the thoracic spine is the rotation because of their oblique orientation of the facet joints and as you go down the thoracic spine the rotation decreases and the bending movement increases and coming to lumbar spine the little rotation happens due to orientation of the facets in the sagittal plane and it is actually the greatest movement happens here is the flexion and extension so what are the principles on which the spinal orthosis are designed basically they are designed based on these five principles that is balanced horizontal forces or a three point pressure uh, process or a four point uh, pressure process or a fluid compression 
sleeve principle axial distraction or a skeletal fixation type let's see what are these so basically a uh, balanced horizontal forces are typically used in uh, scoliosis correction or a kyphosis correction in different planes uh, in scoliosis it is used in a carolan plane and in basically in um, a kyphosis correction it is used in a sagittal plane basically the uh, there are three horizontal forces two in one direction and one in opposite direction when you have three points sometimes if you have a double major curve you can have four points one two in one direction and two in other direction so because the one wherever there is a one point which is uh, basically counteracting the two points there is a maximum amount of force at the one point so that is applied at the apex of the curve so same like a jivet brace so it is in the sagittal plane so the posterior there is one posterior pad and there are two anterior pads so that is why the maximum force is acting at the posterior pad which is at the apex of the kyphosis then fluid compression is a typical example is our abdominal compression binders or ls corsets which basically compress the abdominal contents and make them like a basically rigid fluid filled uh, container which actually decreases the load on the spine by 30 to 40% and holds the spine in erect posture and then axial distraction the typical are uh, milwaukee brace or halo pelvic tractions uh, which basically stretch the spine and then stabilize it or also help in correcting the uh, deformities and sleeve principle the most commonly used uh, brace is boston type of brace we'll see what are those basically there is a sleeve of a uh, cage constructed around the body to hold it in a upright position and then skeletal fixation type is a kind of halo vest type basically this is a invasive procedure where you fix a halo to the skull and fix a vest to the um, the thora uh, thoraco abdominal region and then fix them so again we have to also understand what are the nomenclature what we call them really so like dr kapoor was already mentioning it is based upon the region of the spine which is getting covered the co means cervical orthosis it mainly covers only cervical region cto means cervico thoracic orthosis uh, it covers cervi uh, cervical spine and thoracic spine and ctlso it covers whole spine uh, cervical thoracic lumbar and sacral spine tlso is again thoraco lumbo sacral orthosis LSO is lumbosacral orthosis and SO is sacral orthosis these are the most common orthoses which are used in uh, spine so there is also a classification based on kind of material which is used to make this uh, orthosis that is flexible spinal ortho orthosis which are made mainly material like canvas or foam and semi rigid spinal orthosis these are in combination with the rigid material and flexible material and rigid spinal orthosis which are made mainly with high uh, density polyethylene so they are they are rigid type or a shell type of orthosis so we'll see one by one with most common orthosis which are used in um, spine so this is the most one of the most common uh, kind of orthosis which we see it is a thomas collar or a soft cervical collar it's a soft variety flexible variety it is made up of polyethylene foam and it is one basically one uh, part of the this is only one part is there in this and it is made up of polyethylene foam and spongy rubber and cotton cover and a stockinet is there on that and these are the holes for the aeration so this is a flexible uh, variety of cervical orthosis so it covers the cervical spine in a circumferential manner it has got a velcro velcro strap to tighten it and anterior posterior openings for aeration so basically it acts by doing a kinesthetic kinesthetic reminder and limits the motion by reminding you that basically you shouldn't be doing any terminal ranges of cervical motion and it also helps in relieving inflammation when you decrease the motion and relieves the pain it is not really uh, restricts the motion too much it restricts flexion by around 26% and the lateral bending and rotation negligibly that is 8 to 17% it is mainly indicated in soft tissue strain and sprains muscle spasm disc diseases and spondylosis 
basically this is indicated mainly in sprain and strains and inflammatory problems rather than where the cervical spine is unstable so you shouldn't be using this collar when you are suspecting any instability in the cervical spine the next uh, collar which is uh, used is a hard cervical collar which is made out of hard polyethylene that is called plastazote and um, it functions same as a soft cervical collar again it reminds you kinesthetic rem reminder is there and then uh, it traps the heat and also relieves the pain because of that and the indications are same again as a soft cervical collar basically the problem with this is a pressure source if it is worn for continuously and if it is not fitting well that is the main complication with the hard cervical collar the next is philadelphia collar this is the most common type of uh, basically collar which is used uh, in the spine uh, that is philadelphia collar philadelphia collar because this is uh, comes from the philadelphia so this is made up of molded polyethylene foam uh, strengthened with the plastic sheet and this is into two separate pieces then one is anterior piece and the one is posterior piece and um, it has got straps for uh, basically fitting it well upper portion supports the jaw and uh, uh, and the back portion this supports the occiput and this is goes to the sternum that is upper upper thoracic region and this hole this is most commonly asked in the exams what is this hole meant for this hole is meant for uh, whenever you need a tracheostomy uh, to put a tracheostomy uh, tube and then attach your uh, basically airway into the tracheostomy tube so this hole is made for tracheostomy so again it functions by kinesthetic, uh, kinesthetic reminder so it definitely restricts motion uh, in subaxial cervical spine from c2 to uh, c6 actually and um, the flexion extension uh, is uh, restricted up to 60 to 70% lateral bending around 30 to 35% rotation around 60 to 65% indications are used for temporary immobilization in cervical spine injury this is the most common uh, kind of uh, collar which is used in emergency situations or on the roadside accidents or at the site of accident and this is used post anterior cervical fusion to give a basically support and it can also be used as a temporary stabilizer after you remove your halo so it it shouldn't be used when you have a high instability at uh, c1 c2 because uh, it increases the movement at uh, upper cervical spine and decreases the movement at sub or sub axial cervical spine so this is used as only temporary immobilizer when it comes to upper cervical spine injuries the next modification of philadelphia collar is miami j collar uh, because the philadelphia collar had an issues with the pressure source and it it uh, it, it was really cumbersome to wear so the miami j collar had its own modifications again it came up with two piece system that's again polyethylene and it is more softer as compared to philadelphia collar and it is washable and again it has got a uh, opening uh, around the chin and the occiput you can custom adjust the uh, sizes so that is why it fits very well and then if you see the sternal pad is very soft so that is why it is more comfortable to wear and um, it has got the lowest mandibular and occipital tissue interface so it decreases basically uh, development of pressure source and it lowers the skin temperature and uh, less sweating because of the aeration and less skin background so again it is used in all sorts of uh, cervical spine injuries uh, anterior after the anterior cervical fusion jefferson fractures hangman fractures traumatic spondylolisthesis of c2 on c3 tense type 1 fractures it is not indicated for type 2 or type 3 fractures it's only indicated for type 1 fractures because they are inherently stable and after anterior discectomy or in cervical trauma in unconscious patients and in cervical strain again malibu collar it's again a modification of a philadelphia collar it has got again two pieces and it has got more straps so that you can adjust it very well it fits uh, better than uh, actually any other uh, collars there is a adjustable chin support you can actually cut it and adjust it according to uh, your chin size and it comes in only one size uh, so it fits for one one size fits for all 
and um, you can add a thoracic to this collar so by increasing the immobilization at cervical thoracic junction again it can be used in all the indications where we can use a uh, miami j collar so then the next brace uh, which is used is a somi brace uh, somi brace is a sternal occipital and mandibular immobilizer basically this has got a more immobilizing properties as compared to a any um, philadelphia or similar uh, collars so it has got a anterior plate and a mandibular support and occipital support behind and it has got three connecting rods one front and two for the occipital uh, support so it has got a shoulder harness and a trunk straps so that is why it it immobilizes uh, cervical spine uh, very rigidly as compared to uh, philadelphia collar and same so it in flexion extension it decreases by 80% and rotation again by 60 to 65% and lateral bending by 35% so see somi brace controls flexion in c1 c3 segments that is why philadelphia collar fails to do this Uh, that is why the somi brace is used whenever there is a higher level of injury in uh, cervical spine and in atlanto axial instabilities and neural arch fractures of the c1 and c2 fourth post collar it's again similar to uh, somi brace it has got again a sternal pad and occipital and mandibular support but then now you have four posts two from front and two from behind and then again it has got a uh, shoulder harness and a Uh, chest straps uh, it does the similar kind of uh, basically restriction but then because of the four posts the rotation restricted here is more so when it compared to uh, basically um, somi and four post collar the difference is in lateral bending it decreases more lateral bending 55 to 80% and in rotation again it decreases to 70% so it decreases more uh, flexion is same but then lateral bending and rotation as compared to the somi brace so commonly used in uh, stable spinal fractures and moderate to severe fractures in the upper cervical uh, spine so the next brace is a cervical halo this is very important uh, because it's a invasive procedure it involves lot of complications and it needs to be applied uh, in a very diligent manner so uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, in detail about this brace so it has got a oval ring Uh, it can be uh, it, there are many types of rings available uh, we'll see what kind of rings available in the next slide and it has got a padded uh, thermoplastic waist and four metallic bars two in the front and two in the back so waist can be depending upon the level of injury it can be a half waist till the nipples it can be short extended uh, waist uh, it can go up to till the 12th rib and there is a full waist which will go up to iliac crest so usually half waist is used when you have upper cervical injuries and uh, full waist uh, is used when you have lower cervical injuries so it provides maximum motion control in all types of the um, braces flexion extension is restricted to almost to the 96% lateral bending up to again to 96% and rotation up to 99% so that is why whenever you have a most unstable injuries in the upper cervical spine this is the preferred kind of brace which is uh, used so when it comes to uh, application of this brace we have to be very careful when we apply the pins uh, so there are two anterior pins and two posterior pins so anterior pins all usual always you should apply on the lateral one third of the eyebrows because medially you have supratrochlear and uh, supraorbital nerves if you apply on those areas you can injure those nerves and whenever you apply these pins you should always ask the patient to close the eyes very tightly otherwise a uh, patient will have a problem in closing eyes uh, if you um, apply the pins when the patient is has opened his eyes and uh, the pins shouldn't be uh, basically penetrating the both the cortices of the skull uh, it should be crossing only the uh, uh, first cortex and if you cross that you will have a dural puncture and csf leaks and because this is done uh, basically as a outpatient procedure there are higher chances of infection and it is kept for longer time if at all you puncture the inner cortex uh, there is a higher chance of infection spreading into meninges 
so these are the rings which i was talking they can be a half ring like uh, this uh, it is a uh, two third of the uh, it covers the two third of the skull and leaves out the posterior part for resting or you can have a modification and the ring which goes upwards and occiput can rest onto the pillow chalo theek hai bhai aap dekh lo okay you you can have a only half ring and with modified okay. bent like this so it it basically clears your vision and it also clears uh, the rods which go into this um, ring so that it clears your vision so the indications in adult are uh, any upper cervical spine fractures especially occipital condyle fractures occipital cervical dislocations stable type 2 fractures type 2 odontoid fractures in young patients and type 2 and type 2a hangman fractures again in pediatric the indications are similar Uh, except uh, basically c1 c2 dislocations also you can use in uh, children so it has got lot of complications the most common complication is loosening pin loosening uh, due to basically necrosis of the uh, cortices or the bone around the pin and then the second most com complication is infection don't take care of the uh, and uh, it's lot of it causes lot of discomfort dural punctures can happen and uh, that is what i was talking if you apply on the medial um, third of the eyebrows uh, you can have a supra orbital or supra trochlear nerve palsy and there is one unique phenomena with the uh, cervical halo waist application that is called as snaking effect we do tend to think that uh, you application of a uh, halo demobilizes cervical spine completely but then in a supine or a prone position if a uh, waist is not properly fitting it can have a something called as snaking effect basically the cervical spine becomes s shaped uh, the c1 uh, the upper cervical spine extends at the c1 c2 and the cervical uh, the subaxial cervical spine goes into flexion causing a s shaped spine so that is again a problematic thing so that is why the waist is very important when we apply the cervical halo waist braces so we'll just skip through this and uh, then you, we have extended cervical orthosis like minerva jacket uh, which is seldomly used these days and it's a rigid variety custom made total contact orthosis you can use a basically plaster cast or you can use a uh, hdpe uh, which is uh, basically made tailor made to the patient uh, by initially fabricating by pop cast and function is again uh, similar to basically uh, halo waist and uh, motion control maximum at lower cervical spine and cervical thoracic junction then again there is one more uh, brace which is extended cervical that is ctlso that is a halo pelvic brace this is same as a, a halo waist but the waist part goes to the pelvis on to the iliac uh, crest and uh, it uh, immobilizes mainly uh, the lower cervical spine and it is usually used for uh, basically scoliosis correction and fracture immobilization or in pot spine of uh, upper thoracic spines so come next coming to thoraco lumbo sacral orthosis that is tlso uh, again we have all seen this kind of a brace this is taylor's brace this is most commonly used brace this is a semi rigid uh, variety because it has got rigid parts and flexible parts and it has got uh, basically four parts one is abdominal corset and uh, which this is abdominal corset which has a thoracic extension and it has got paraspinal bars and it has got a shoulder harness and it has got uh, basically straps which go sometimes into the groin or into the abdomen and it works on three point pressure system it limits mainly flexion and extension of the thoracolumbar spine Uh, and it also works by fluid mechanism that increases the intra abdominal pressure and converts abdominal cavity into a semi rigid cylinder that helps in restricting the spinal motion it is best used when the pathology is between t4 to l2 so that is why it's a thoracal lumbar thoracal lumbar junction basically it's best uh, used when uh, pathology is between t4 to l2 so indications can be any pathology which is affecting in between these regions 
then the next is again semi rigid frame is a uh, there are two kinds of uh, braces those are these are called hyper extension braces one is ash brace and then the duet brace so uh, this is a duet brace so duet has got anterolateral two rectangular frames which one goes on to the uh, basically uh, sternum and one goes to the uh, basic pubis and the posterior part is on the spine so this works again on a three point pressure system the maximum pressure is at the posterior pad and um, there is a next kind of brace is a ash brace that is anterior spinal hyperextension brace this is a cruciform type brace so it it has got a anterior cross frame so it has got a sternal and suprapubic pads was sternal and suprapubic pads and uh, there are what uh, with the vertical bar frame and two lateral thoracolumbar pads they are on the lateral slides and one posterior thoracolumbar frame so again it uh, acts based on the three point pressure system and limits basically same flexion extension at the um, uh, thoracolumbar spine mainly limits the flexion uh, extension is not restricted that much again it can be used uh, anywhere pathology from t4 to l2 uh then again modified uh, basically tls or a body jacket orthosis these are again uh, made like a minerva jacket uh basically initially the mold is taken with the pop and then thermoplastics are molded according to that uh, they also act based on the three point pressure system limits flexion and extension of the thoracolumbar spine uh, these are more con- they basically they are in more contact with the body uh so it prevents more motion as compared to duet or a ash brace again it it is used when uh, the pathology is from t4 to l2 the next type of braces are lumbosacral orthosis this is again one of the most common kind of brace which we use uh, in in practice uh, it encompasses basically abdomen pelvis and supports the lumbosacral spine again it acts by kinesthetic reminder in inflammatory problems and uh, restricts only terminal movement it is mainly uh, basically used for kinesthetic reminder it again it acts by fluid mechanism that is increase intraabdominal pressure and makes the spine rigid again it used when spinal pathology is from l1 to l4 so this kind of brace is not used when uh, at the lumbosacral junction so it is mainly for l1 to l4 uh, so there's a, another modification of this is knight's orthosis that is again a semi semi rigid type of design and uh, there is components are pelvic and thoracic bands are there this is a pelvic band and this is a thoracic band and there are two posterior metallic uprights these basically take the contour of the lumbar lordosis and there are two lateral metallic up supports and there is a leather band front and there is a strap so again it is used in uh, l4 to l4 l1 to l4 pathology l4 to l1 to l4 pathology and it can be used in any uh, diseases which affect in this region uh and there are special orthoses which are used for mainly scoliosis uh they are uh, ma- mainly most commonly used braces are milwaukee brace and uh, boston brace again they are uh, basically uh named after the place where they have been designed mainly they act by three point or a four point of uh, basically counter uh, fixation uh, principle and uh, they are used when scoliosis is between 220 to 50 degrees so milwaukee brace is a, one of the most complex braces it has got a lot of parts uh, it has got a neck ring and it has got a chin rest it has got a occipital pads and it has got one anterior adjustable bar and there are two posterior adjustable bars one hump pad uh, basically to the thoracic scoliosis to push the scoli on to the convex it the hump bar is on the convex side and there are two pelvic rests so this this brace is mainly used when the apex of the scoliosis is above t8 and uh, it uh, also you can because the posterior anterior uh, pads are adjustable you can do a longitudinal distraction and uh, correct the scoliosis not only by three point uh, fixation you can also distract and correct the scoliosis in milwaukee brace so 
it is used in most of the double thoracic curves other double thoracic curves when the apex of the curve is above t8 and again the curve angle has to be 20 to 50 degrees and in sagittal plane you can change this pad to the posterior and use in schurman's scoliosis schurman's kyphosis the next most commonly this is the most commonly used brace because it is more aesthetically uh, right and cosmetically acceptable easy to wear it can be worn inside the uh, clothes so this is the most common brace which is prescribed world over that is the boston brace it's a rigid frame and extends from thorax to the sacrum the and uh, it is prepared by basically a negative casting uh, process with the pop and uh, works by applying pressure on the uh, convex side of the scoliosis and then you have cut to accommodate the opposite part on the convex concave side so there is a pressure points pads onto the convex uh, convex side and there is a cut to accommodate the body part on the concave side so again this is used when the apex of the curve is below t8 level but then there is a modification of boston brace there is a high boston brace which also can be used uh, basically uh, to have more acceptability and more brace compliance uh, in when the apex of the curve is above t8 also uh, so again uh, it fits around the arms and uh, you can see these are the pads uh, which basically go into the um, convex side and then you have a cut on the concave side there is a wilmington brace it's a modification of again a uh, boston brace it's a full contact uh, molded plastic orthosis there is no cut in this uh, brace and uh, it is adjusted mainly based upon this uh, basically straps and the pads which are there inside the uh, this well molded plastic orthosis then the modifications are soft braces these uh, spine core brace these came because um basically the compliance for boston brace or a uh, wilmington brace or a milwaukee brace is less because it's not cosmetic cosmetically very acceptable and it's very cumbersome to wear they sweat inside so these are the flexible braces these are called as basically these correct the scoliosis uh, <clears throat> over correct the scoliosis and uh, these are these are only useful when the scoliosis is very less and flexible where you can over correct the scoliosis uh, so there is a basically a pelvic unit and there is a basically there are strong straps which pull from convex side to concave side correcting the scoliosis um so there are a lot of complications with the scoliosis brace treatment base for the first thing is body image or a psychological impact and discomfort from the chin and uh, throat contact in milwaukee brace they can have pressure sores in the occipital region and the chin region and in the throat region and it is very difficult uh, to basically eat along with this brace and pelvic or axillary portion of the brace especially thoracolumbar basically tlso types cause pressure sores skin irritation sweating and if it own for longer time it temporarily decreases the vital capacity and uh, there can also be a barrel chest deformity formation if uh, it is worn for longer time and the, the most common side effect is a psychological effects with the brace which can have on children thank you mm -hmm.